everybody, it's Robert Earl out here at the Eco Ranch in Far West Texas. And if you follow my videos, I am minus Cascade the Wonder Dog. He's feeling lazy. He's crawled up under the bed and it's hard for him to get in and out. So he didn't want to be in the beginning of this. So I'm sorry if you're looking for Cascade the Wonder Dog. He's over there sleeping. Uh, but at any rate, we're going to... Um, we're going to do a video about what for Debbie and I is a watershed event. Ha! We're finally able to um, install our toilet out here in the guest bathroom. I never thought I'd get to the point in my life where installing a toilet was a big event. So I have truly arrived at old age. So anyway, the reason it's a watershed event, event for Debbie and I is the only real reason we need to keep the travel trailer so close to us. I keep pointing that way because you are in the ba bathroom looking at the essentially the north wall of the house or the north end of the house. So behind you is the um, the dog, what I call the dogs building, and then the rest of the construction that we're working on, include, including the turret. So the travel trailer is over here inside the footprint of the house. The reason it had to stay there was because of the toilet. Had we moved it earlier, then we would have been walking essentially to the outhouse. When I put the toilet in here, we don't need it that close, so we're going to move it to its final destination, which is going to be the place where we set up for any guests we have, including you. So if you watch this and have been watching our stuff, you maybe would like to come and visit when you come out this way, you can come and visit. You are welcome to visit, stay out there and visit, and go about your business, or you're welcome to come here and help. I don't care, but especially if you're one of our followers here, whichever one you want to do. I can always use help, but that's away from the video. So, we're going to discuss putting the toilet in today. And the reason I want to do a separate toilet install video is, again, keeping with my policy of not just showing you what I do that works, I like to show you what I do that fails, or if I just putts it up, because uh, and, and we've been laughing lately, but more and more I'm beginning to feel like Homer Simpson out here. Uh, and I did a Homer Simpson, and I want to show you what it was. Now, I ran my plumbing uh, for the, um, the, 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 the cold water plumbing. Uh, is coming you know, through the ceiling. It connects up, and then it divides up to the, to the, uh, the sink and, and the shower here, as well as the toilet. And I did what I thought was a pretty good job of putting the... Um, uh, putting it through the wall here. Now, you see there's a leak, and it's not much of a leak, and it could be from several things, and let me cover it, because again, if you're building and, and doing new construction and you are a DIY person, uh, this is something you have to face. Number one, do I have a bad valve here? Was it bad? Because so much stuff is made in China, I assume this valve is from China. Do I have a bad valve? Is it leaking? I don't know if the valve is leaking. However, I punched out one of these bottles here, just punched the bottom out, and put the, uh, put the PEX through here, and to make sure it would stick good, and that, uh, because if you've just got a piece of, like, rod, or a round thing, in mortar, you, it can break loose. It'll, it'll still stay, the hole will be there and nice and tight, but it'll turn, and I didn't really want that out here. So what I did that I think is the issue was I took some um, bailing wire around the PEX, oh, in about that far from the valve, and twisted it. And I wanted it twisted tight so that it would hold tight against the PEX. And I believe that's the problem there. We're going to find that out in a minute. But I wanted to show you. I screwed this up somehow, or it's cheap Chinese crap. That not necessarily was the mistake. Here's the mistake I made. I didn't test it under pressure for hours or a day before I packed in the mortar. In not testing it, when I installed it, pressurized the system, I didn't see the leak because it's a very small leak. It's only coming right here. Uh, and I kind of guesstimated that it had to be somewhere in the neighborhood of a half a gallon a, a day, which is not livable, especially when you're on catchment. But a half a gallon a day could become 3,000 gallons an hour uh, if you don't address it. So let's address it. Let's get this thing pulled off and um, see where the problem was. Hey, I'm about, um, I'm about halfway through from, uh, or maybe a little more than halfway through from the outside and the inside here. Now, when I took this off, 
I noticed that, now this is a compression fitting, <laughs> hold it so you can see it. This is a compression fitting that also you can use with the, you know, the plumber's tape and tighten it down. And I noticed I hadn't, um, I hadn't, well, I may have actually putzed up on it and, and put it on finger tight and not tightened it the rest of the way. I noticed that when I took it off because it was only gripping in here to here by just a couple of a couple of threads. So that may have been the issue. Coming through from the other side, I see no evidence of water going through. Um, and so my first thought was to put it back together and test it. And I thought, no, you know, I don't think I really want to do that right now since I've come this far. I'm thinking I'll go ahead and chip the rest of this mortar out. Um, they sell beauty rings to go over this, and I can get a beauty ring later on. But I think I'll chip the rest of this out, and I'll secure it actually with spray foam, like uh, great stuff, and secure it in place with the great stuff. Because you only turn the toilet on and off, you know, once every couple of years if you're lucky. So um, I'm going to go ahead and chip it the rest of the way out, but it looks like that was the issue. So, you know, always, 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 guys, before you put something together, make sure that you haven't just dry fitted it and you're putting together a dry fitting or you finger tighten something because that may have been the issue. And there was no way of me telling because the base of this was in a little bit of the mortar so I had to use the pliers to take it off. So let's continue. Well guys, it turns out that the problem was the valve. It is an, another one of those cheap made in China valves and uh, uh, by this time, after World War II, Japan had learned how to do good quality stuff. Apparently, we're never going to teach the Chinese, so we're going to have stuff like that to worry about. So, what I did, it just so happened that I had a, um, I had a spare one that I had bought and then found out that it was a compression fitting, and I have always had an issue with compression fittings, didn't want to use it. But it would, that compression fitting would work with the PEC. So I put the uh, new fitting on here. We're using the compression fitting. No sign of any leakage whatsoever. But this time I'm not going to um, secure the pipe in the wall until it's been in, until we've had it in operation for a couple weeks. It's under pressure right now, so it's holding just fine and not leaking. So we're going to move on to the toilet. Before I do the toilet, I do have to get my, um, I do have to clean all these bottles behind the toilet so that later on, if I clean all the bottles, I'm not putting all the stuff on the brand new porcelain. So we'll get that done, and then Debbie and I will get working on the uh, toilet um, very soon for me and like, like that for you. So see you. Hey, so you caught me cleaning up the bottles. Now, I've said in previous videos I was going to spray with muriatic acid. Uh, I do have to get this removed, get this dirt off of here, as well as clean a little bit around many of the bottles. Uh, and muriatic acid is an easy, I don't want to say safe way, but an easy way. Well, Debbie is very, very concerned about the animal's health and my health, and in that order, unfortunately. So. She is really, really doesn't want me to use muriatic acid because, you know, my lungs are already in trouble. So, I'm going to go ahead and do it this way. It's going to take a long time, but it's going to clean these up. And I noticed the angle I put you at, these don't look quite as pretty as they should from that angle. But they really stand out once they're done. I'll show you when I finish this section of wall. I'm almost thinking of doing this whole section of the wall uh, before we put the toilet up. But I did want to show you... Uh, Show you that and um, just get going on that. I finished getting the uh, bottles uh, sanded down and I made a mistake. Uh, I'm full of mistakes. I'm full of mistakes like having roosters. Anyway, I'm full, I, I make a lot of mistakes and I made one and it's a simple one and guys we tend to do this a lot. We tend to get that macho Oh, macho is almost the wrong word, but that manly thing, that Tim Taylor. Rawr, 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 rawr. Uh, and what I did was I started and I did up to here with these bottles. But I didn't have any kind of a mask or respirator on. And I'm really suffering from that today. So guys, I know it looks silly. I know sometimes a respirator can be expensive. This is the type of thing that respirators are made for. You really need one. I mean... 
If you want to be macho and not use it or say you don't, that's fine. But you really need a respirator. A mask even wouldn't have worked yesterday. So I'm really suffering. My lungs are full. My nose is full. Uh, plus, I got bad lungs to begin with. You don't know if you've got... We all don't know if we've got good or bad lungs sometimes. So uh, better, to, better to get the um, respirator. Now, when the sun came up this morning, this wall is all open behind in the garage. You know, eventually there'll be a wall there and it'll be a dark garage. But when that came up, it was beautiful the way that the uh, light came through these bottles. I took a couple pictures. Here they are. Really pretty. So if you put bottles uh, uh, in your structure at all, you know, make sure to put them in a way where the light's going to always enhance them, like I've done on the light wall behind, well, over yonder, and the light wall in our kitchen. Really nice. So right now, uh, Debbie's getting ready, and Debbie and I are going to install the toilet here. Now, um, I'm not going to do a how-to on how to install a toilet, because I've replaced toilets in the span of my life, but I've never actually installed brand new plumbing all the way through. So, yeah, it'll be a how-to, uh, but if I make mistakes, I'll be showing you how what not to do. We'll get going in a, in a minute. Okay, so Debbie and I are about ready to get started here. First thing we have to do is set the, um, put the closet bolts in place. Now this is, um, the cool thing about this toilet is I got the wax ring, the seat, everything all came with it. Sometimes they don't. But what I wanted to show you is a lot of times as you put the closet bolts in, you see, they'll want to wiggle and move because you've got nothing holding them in place. So this company gave me this ring here, which will press over and actually hold it in place. Now, it's very important because, generally speaking, it's going to be one person putting the toilet on. And if these things are moving, it can be a pain in the neck. And it's just heavy enough that it'll wear you out. So that's the start. I'm going to get these in place and put my wax ring on the toilet. This company suggests that I put the wax ring on the toilet, then turn it upside down and press it onto the uh, flange. Well, if you can hear me over the cackle birds, the wax ring has two ways it can go. You can see I, I've got the black thing here that is a little bit of a reducer, and then the wax here. This will always go, that little reducer will always go down in the toilet, like so. So I'm going to put that on right now, and we'll get ready to put the toilet on. All right, well, if you're a follower of my videos, you know I'm going to show you what I do. Uh, if I screw it up, I screw it up. You get to see the mistake, um, or you get to see it done right. So I'm going to turn the toilet over and put it on the closet bolts right now. As I said, toilet's heavy, and to make matters worse, I brought a bunch of flagstones home a couple days ago and pulled a muscle in my back. So let's see if I drop it or if I get it on correctly. sure that you've got your line correct and it was about I'd say two degrees off because the last thing in the world you want to be doing is sitting on the toilet and be all askew it might it, it possibly could cramp you right up constipate you even there she goes now let me show you the placement now, I set this to be um, uh, 12 inches from the uh, from the wall and that even includes this little belly the wall has a belly in it right here so we're 12 inches off the wall right there my supply line uh, the uh, vent and then in case I need electric behind the toilet I've got the plug so we should be alright I'm just gonna check it for level and we'll come back and bolt her down okay toilets down 
Uh, if you notice in front, the tiles aren't um, uh, don't come all the way out. Well, of course, we're going to tile the whole floor, uh, and that's a separate video. But um, uh, because the tiles still have to come out and because the tiles have to be grouted, I'm not going to caulk the toilet. If you were doing this as an installation in your existing home, you would caulk, and you can see there is a small gap there. The toilet's down tight. If I tighten it, it it's, it's pulling nice and tight now. If I could do it any tighter, I'm going to have an issue. Now, you can see it's perfectly level, so we're all ready to finish it out. And finishing it out will be now putting the tank on. Oh, I did neglect to say that even though my tile is level, it may look a little off, and that's again, that'll be in the tiling video, uh, but even though the tile is level, the toilet still needed shimming on this side. So shim the toilet, make sure everything is all right. I'm not going to cut the bolts off or cut the shims or, you know, much venting until I'm sure the toilet's seated correctly and we're not going to have any any leakage or any wib wobbling issues. But um, you, w you, you should be ready to shim your toilet, and if you're going to shim your toilet, use plastic shims. That's what I've used here. So you know the rest of the installation is pretty much straightforward. Attach the tank to the to the uh, uh, to the to the bowl, tighten it down, attach the seat, hook up your supply line, turn it on, fill it with water, which we've done all of that and it's done. This is a watershed for us, like I said at the beginning, because now we have a toilet, that means a travel trailer can come out. That will be an interesting video when we hook up to that thing and pull it backwards on out. But for now, the toilet's done. Here it is. Whoa, you gotta, you gotta zoom in. Here, you guys gotta zoom in. In fact, I didn't zoom you in. I want you right here, because we haven't tested it yet. Here it is. Oh, what a nice sound after seven years of using an RV toilet. 1.2 gallons per flush. And it's there and ready to go. And I hope you enjoyed me sharing with you the installation of our first toilet. We've still got one more to put in, and that'll be a while yet. But at least we're, we're here. The guest room uh, has, a, has a toilet. Now we can get going on the rest of the place and start the other videos. Got to finish this, this bathroom up. That'll be in a vlog. So... Uh, I'll let you guys go. Until next time, by the way, it's Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day to all of you mothers out there. And until next time, it's Robert Earl out at the Eco Ranch in far west Texas. See you later.